Okay, we can start. Today we are going to explain the so-called Ocon law. Ocon in the uh, 70s estimated the, um, the following relation between the unemployment rate and the rate of growth, GDP growth. UT minus UT minus 1 equal to minus 0 0.4 gty minus 3%. This relation, estimated by Ocon, showed that in order to reduce the unemployment rate, because this is the unemployment rate at time t and the unemployment rate at time t minus 1, in order to reduce this unemployment rate, the rate of growth of GDP should be or should be uh, greater than three percent, which was the natural rate of growth of GDP. And even in case that the, the rate of growth was um, was greater than the natural uh, rate of growth, the the um, the, the Increasing in the employment rate is not one by one. In which sense? If we suppose, using the estimated um, relation um, by Ocon, if the rate of growth G in Y was, for instance, equal to 4%, we have that ut minus ut minus 1 which is the uh, change in, in an employment rate will be equal to minus 0 0.4 times 4% minus 3% and this is minus 0.5% so in this case if we have a rate of growth equal to 4% the, uh, we have a decrease in the unemployment rate equal to minus 0.4% the general rule general Ocon law can be written the following way ut minus ut minus 1 equal to minus delta g Gty minus Gn, where Gti is the actual rate of growth, Gn is the natural or potential rate of growth, delta is this coefficient estimated equal to 0 0.5, but it's a number uh, smaller than 1. Why delta is uh, smaller than 1? For uh, two main reasons, because we have a hypothesis of labor hoarding in which uh, firms increase the uh, labor hours instead of the uh, labor uh, unit, and uh, the other hypothesis is that, is that uh, when we when we increase in, um, in the economic activity, so we have a, uh, an increase in the, uh, in the labor supply, because many people uh, try to, to find a, a job. So we have this coefficient smaller than one. Now we we will try to understand why, in order to reduce the unemployment rate, we need that the rate of growth um, uh, we, we need a rate of growth greater than the natural rate of growth. The Potential output or natural output can be written in the following way yt, which is the potential output, equal to at times nt, where nt is the labor force we can uh, employ in, uh, our, in uh, our economic system. At is a, a sort of productivity uh, for uh, uh, each unit of labor employed in, in production. So uh, in AT we have capital and technological progress. We can derive this uh, function 
with respect to time, and we have dyt respect to time equal to dat respect to time derived respect to time times mt because this is a product between between two function of time plus dmt or dt times at we can divide both members of this equation both sides uh, by uh, yt and we get 1 over yt I hope it's possible to read yes and we can divide also the right hand side by yt in this way we have this is okay this first term is the rate of growth of GDP the actually potential um, rate of growth so it's G T or G N we can call it G N as in the generic uh, Okun expression now the second term we can write Y T according this to this formulation so we have D A T over the T times N T over A T and t so we can simplify this plus d and t over the t times a t and again we can substitute to uh, this expression this expression a t and t and we can simplify this is the rate of growth of technology or of or, or productivity and this is the rate of growth of the labor force or population rate of growth so we can write this natural rate of growth as the, the rate of growth of productivity GAT plus the rate of growth of the labor force GN. And now we can understand why. Because this rate of growth, the natural rate of or, or potential rate of growth depends on, on the increase the, the rate of growth of technology and the rate of growth of labor force in order to reduce the employment rate we need to uh, we, uh, we need that the uh, rate of growth of GDP uh, to be greater than the rate of growth of technology plus the rate of growth of the labor force in order to understand better this situation, we can uh, think that the rate of growth of technology is around 2% and the rate of growth of uh, labor force is around 2%. So the rate of growth, the natural rate of growth is around 2 plus 1, 3%. If, we have, uh, if the actual rate of growth is equal to the natural rate of growth, so is equal to 3%, uh, there is no uh, improvement in uh, in unemployment rate because the rate of growth of technology the increase in the GDP is due to the increase in productivity and the increase in uh, labor force so there is no uh, decrease in unemployment rate if the actual in uh, the actual uh, growth rate is for instance 4% as we have seen in this example this increase in the, in the GDP is due to technology and the increase in the labor force just for 3% but the difference so the increasing of 1% means a reduce it uh, means a decrease in unemployment rate because if we want to increase the uh, rate of growth of one percent above the natural rate of growth we need to employ more worker so we need to reduce the unemployment rate of everything is clear in this uh, uh, explanation now we need to introduce, so if it's clear, 
Okay, now we can consider the, uh, consider the other demand. We write a reference yt equal to gamma zero plus at plus gamma one m t over p t is the real stock command. It is the uh, autonomous component of the other demand. Now, if we have for instance, in increasing the real money stock, we have also increased in the aggregate demand and then increase in, um, in the GDP in production. Now we can assume that gamma zero is equal to zero because we want to consider just the monetary policy. So we need we can rewrite this equation as yt equal to gamma, we can uh, call this parameter gamma, tra times the real stock of money. Now we can rewrite this uh, equation in terms of uh, logarithm. We have the log of yt is equal to the log of gamma plus the log of mt minus the log of pt. Because the log of uh, ratio is equal to the difference between the two logs. Now we can call log by uh, we can denote by small letters so small yt is the log of capital yt then we have log of gamma plus the log of capital mt is called small mt minus the log of capital pt can be defined as small pt in this way we can compute the rate of growth of gdp why? Because you, if we consider, given this uh, definition, we have the small yt is defined as the log of capital yt. But if we derive small yt respect to time, this is equal to 1 over yt, because this is a log, times the derivative of yt respect to time. But this is the rate of growth of GDP, this definition. So we can derive respect to time this both sides of this equation. And finally we get d is small y t over d t derivative respect to time is equal to this member uh, doesn't change if we have change in time, so the derivative respect to time is equal to zero. Then we have the derivative of small mt respect to time minus the derivative of small pt respect to time. These variables are in logs, so the derivative respect to time we have seen is equal to the rate of growth. Then we can write this equation as g dy, the rate of growth of GDP, equal to the rate of growth of money, minus the rate of growth of prices, which is equal to inflation rate by t. This is an important equation, which shows that if we have an increase, this y, an increase in the rate of growth, we have a positive rate of growth of money, this not necessary means that we have an increase in GDP. What is required is that the rate of growth of money uh, to be greater than the rate of growth of price, so the rate of growth, uh, the inflation rate. Because in this, if the uh, rate of growth of money is greater, is equal to the rate of growth of price, the real money stock, stock doesn't change. In order to affect the real activity, we need that the real money stock increase. So we need that the increase in the money stock is greater than the increase in prices.